Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a review of a fairly entry-level podcasting microphone. That microphone is the Zoom ZDM1, which comes in this Zoom podcast microphone pack. Comes with some headphones, which I will not be reviewing because mine were broken out of the box. But if you are interested in this microphone pack, it will cost you around $120. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. For this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i20 2nd Gen. My gain is set just at around 430. I will not be doing any kind of post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. What a shocker, you will get the microphone. You'll get a foam windscreen that goes right on top of the microphone. You will get the microphone mount, which also has a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. You'll find a desktop tripod stand, a 2 meter or 6 foot XLR to XLR cable, a set of headphones with a 3 meter cable, which terminates into a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack. And it also comes with a 3.5 millimeter to quarter inch cable adapter and some documentation as well as a download code for Steinberg Wave Lab Cast Software thing. Then as far as the build quality, it does feel quite good given the price point. It has an all metal body as well as a very sturdy metal mesh grill. The grill doesn't have much foam to protect it from plosives though. As you move around the microphone, there are no buttons, no dials, no filters, there is nothing else on it. On the rear, you'll find the XLR port. This is an end address microphone, and it is manufactured in China. Then as far as the specs, this mic has a super cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 50 Hz to 18 kHz, a sensitivity of around negative 54.5 dB, an impedance of 200 ohms, and a max SPL of 135 dB. Now I am spinning around the ZDM1 to 90 degrees so you can hear what the off-axis coloration and rejection is. We'll continue around to the 180 degree rear of the mic. Here's what it sounds like. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle and then we will rotate and end at the front of the mic. Now let's go ahead and test the plosive rejection of this microphone with and without the provided foam windscreen. Please bring pizza pronto. 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 Now I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. About three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth. And here is how the audio sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you Leet gamers, now I am typing on the sad W keys. Here's how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Now to see how well the provided microphone mount works, I will go ahead and bump the desk to see how much of that noise it rejects. And I'll go ahead and bump the boom arm. <sighs> That's terrible. And now to be as thorough and obnoxious as possible, I'll go ahead and tap the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now for the sake of completionism, I will demonstrate the effect that the provided foam windscreen has on the tone of the microphone. Right now, I'm about three inches off of the end of the microphone. The foam windscreen is not installed, and here is how the audio sounds. And now I have installed the rather thick provided foam windscreen, and here is how the audio sounds. You can tell that it really does dampen quite a bit of the higher frequencies, and I think it does help it out because this has quite a aggressive boost in the upper end. There you go, that's how it affects it. Now I want to do a very quick comparison between the Zoom and a bunch of other popular podcasting microphones so we can see how it performs against the competition. 
Of course, we will start on the Zoom ZDM1. I am only three inches off of this microphone. I am connected to the Focusrite 18i20. Gain is set at four o'clock and check the lower third to see how much I boosted it. Let's jump to the first mic and compare it to that. First microphone we have is the Shure SM58. This is a handheld dynamic microphone. It is $100 and probably one of the most popular microphones for stage use, and maybe even for podcasting. I am three inches off. The gain is still set at four o'clock. Check the lower third, and here's how it sounds before we jump back to the Zoom. Let's jump back to the Zoom now. We are back on the Zoom ZDM1 for all of these tests. I do not have the provided foam windscreen on. Here is how the microphone sounds before we jump to another one. Next, we are on one of my personal favorite handheld podcasting microphones, the SE Electronics V7. This is another $100 handheld dynamic microphone. Three inches off, gain at four o'clock. And let us jump back to the Zoom after you've heard this and... Let you hear that, and we're just doing a bunch of comparisons. That we're, that that is what we are doing. Here, here's the SE Electronics V7. There you go. Back on the Zoom ZDM1. Here's how this microphone sounds to cleanse your palate, get a good feel for it, listen to it. Let's jump to another microphone. Now we are on a relatively new microphone, the Rode Pod Mic, which is more of a broadcast-looking dynamic microphone. It has a yoke mount and all of that. $100. I am three inches off. Gain still at four o'clock. And here is how it sounds compared to the Zoom ZDM1. Let's jump back to the Zoom and compare some more microphones. Back on the Zoom microphone again, here is how it sounds. No settings have been changed. The, dis the distance is exactly the same. Let us jump to another microphone so you can hear how that microphone sounds compared to this one. Now we're going up in price. We are on the MXL BCD1, which goes for about $150. I am three inches off of this thing. Make sure to check the lower third to see how much I boosted it but here is how the MXL sounds compared to the Zoom ZDM1. Alrighty, we're back on the Zoom ZDM1. Still three inches off, still gain set at four o'clock. Listen to the microphone, get a good feel for it. Let's jump to another one and compare it to that one. Now we are on another new entry into the broadcast microphone category. This is the Sontronics Podcast Pro. This is another $150 XLR dynamic microphone, has a yoke mount, all of that fun broadcasting looking stuff. And here is how it sounds, three inches off of it, gain still at four o'clock. And let's jump back to the Zoom and do a couple more microphone comparisons. Hey, wake up. Don't you dare fall asleep on me. Stay awake through this. We're back on the Zoom ZD, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're back on the Zoom ZDM1. Here is how this microphone sounds. Just want you to get a good feel for it before we jump to another microphone so you can hear how it compares to that. Let's jump to that now. Boo! Gotcha. Don't fall asleep on me. Next, because I have a severe microphone collection addiction problem, I am on the Shure SM7B. I am three inches off of the microphone, meaning I'm about five inches off of the capsule. My gain is still set at around four o'clock, so <laughs> this is gonna have to be boosted to heck. But here is how the Shure SM7B sounds compared against the Zoom ZDM1. Oh, and this is a $400 dynamic microphone. I am sincerely hoping that this is the last microphone we're comparing it against. This is the Zoom ZDM1. Let's go to one last microphone and compare it to that. And lastly, because it was out and why not, here is the Electro Voice RE20, which is a $450 XLR broadcasting microphone. No filters, engaged, three inches off, gain at four o'clock. Here is how this microphone sounds compared to the Zoom ZDM1. 450 versus $120 for a microphone and a headphone bundle. I don't even know what that microphone would go for by itself. But there you go. That's a quick comparison of a bunch of different microphones and the Zoom. Let me know in the comments down below, which of these microphones did you like the best? Did you like a $100 microphone, a $300 microphone, a $450 microphone, or is the Zoom ZDM1 going to be your next mic? Let me know in the comments down below.
microphone I've gotta test it out and find out how it sounds but what I think it comes down to how it sounds to you you'll need to let me know how your podcast goes Let me know down below. How did your podcast turn out? I'm really interested. What is your podcast about? Tell me that. Comment down below. What is your podcast about? Okay, to be honest with you, when I bought this entire kit, I was not expecting much given the price point for all of the stuff that comes with it. But I am happily surprised by the microphone, at least. This is definitely not working. I was trying to get into the Halloween spirit. It's it's almost Halloween. I'm going to take off the mask now. Sorry. And first up, in terms of pros, the microphone did a really nice job at background noise rejection, as well as rejection of room tone when you're in an untreated space. The microphone's tone is also very clear and easy to understand while maintaining a relatively smooth sound. And assuming everything functions, I think for the price point, it offers a pretty nice kit. Then in terms of cons, the microphone was fairly susceptible to plosives, so you will need to have pretty good discipline with your microphone technique. Also, it definitely needs a shock mount. It is terrible with bumps of the desk or the boom arm, and if you have it in the provided desktop tripod, that would be even worse. And it is not a standard size, so it may be somewhat difficult to find a shock mount that fits this mic. And to be a little bit nitpicky, I was a bit shocked to see a max SPL of 135 dB, although a lot of people will not hit that. I was expecting to see something a little bit higher, considering most condenser microphones have a max SPL of 130, 135, around the same range as this dynamic. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I found the top end to be somewhat grainy and gritty. It wasn't my favorite sound. It does still work, but it got to be a little bit shouty, if that's even a proper descriptor. It got a little bit unpleasant in the upper register when I got to the upper end of the guitar. The mids, pretty neutral, nothing offensive there. And the low end did get a little bit wooly, if I could call it that, but a high pass filter would clean that right up. Then on the acoustic guitar, I found it to have the very slightest V shape, the top end very boosted as you could see from the frequency response graph, probably 8 dB in the treble and air. The low end, if you get close to it, you're getting a bit of proximity effect, giving you a slight V shape. The mids, nothing offensive, pretty neutral, but all around not something I would throw on an acoustic unless I was in an absolute pinch. Then for singing, the first thing that I noticed was the low end got to be a little bit uncontrolled, especially between 200 and 300 hertz. So you would need to do a little bit of EQ and cut a little bit of that out to clean up the low end. The mids, neutral, nothing offensive, not overly nasally, not scooped out. And the top end, although it is pretty boosted up there, it's not the most articulate sound and it maintains a somewhat soft and pleasing tone, although if you're going for that ultra modern hyper clarity, it's not going to really offer that for you. And lastly, for spoken word, the application that this mic appears to be designed for, I was quite impressed by it. 
It offered a relatively clear and clean sound to it. Even though the top end did start to sound a touch overboosted, the mids, as I already mentioned, are not nasally. They are not scooped out. They just offer a nice and neutral and even sound. The low end is fairly controlled on voice if you're a little bit off of it. If you get right on top of it, it does start to get a little bit woolly and unpleasant. A high pass filter can clear that right up. But the thing that stood out to me the most is given the price point and given how boosted it is, it does maintain a relatively smooth sound, which is really nice to hear at this price point. Pretty darn impressed for a spoken word on the Zoom ZDM1. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Zoom ZDM1 podcasting microphone kit? Sure. As long as you're buying it for spoken word and podcasting and not music, because I think it excels for spoken word, but not so much for music. Now, this microphone does have its issues with the rejection of shocks, also not being the best with plosives. So if you are just starting out, you're going to have to really train yourself to have good microphone technique and speak past the microphone. And most difficultly, to not touch the table that you are recording. You can't tap it. It's going to be picked up. You really need to train yourself if you pick this microphone up. But at $120, I think the microphone sounds surprisingly good. It comes with a six foot XLR cable, a little bit on the short side. It comes with some headphones. I don't know how they sound. I'm not reviewing them, but for $120, if that is your budget, I think it offers a pretty interesting proposition for the entire kit. All right, I think that is going to wrap up for today, but I would love to hear from you in the comments down below, which of my air conditioning just turned on, which of the microphones that I compared the Zoom against did you like the best? Did you like the Electro Voice, the 58, the V7, the Pod Mic, the SM7B? Or did you like the ZDM one the most? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. Want more videos? Subscribe, logo down beneath me, and don't forget to hit that bell icon if you want to hang out in the Discord server, podcastage.com slash Discord, because Discord rejected me from the partner program again. Thanks a lot, Discord, you dicks! If you, want to so <laughs> if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you later. Bye.